Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I want to do is look at a perfectly inelastic two-dimensional collision. All right, what we have here is a truck traveling eastbound and a car traveling northbound. They are going to collide with one another and lock up. So after the collision, they all move together as one big chunk of stuff. And that means that both objects after the collision travel at the same velocity. And in this case, it's going to be at some angle relative to uh, the X or the East direction. I have a couple questions associated with this problem. First, how do we find this final velocity as a vector? Okay, what's the magnitude and what is the direction that uh, the chunk uh, slides off after the collision. Uh, in addition to that, we're also going to look at the impulse on the truck and the impulse on the car, again, as a two-dimensional problem. All right, the best way to support Physics Ninja is to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get started. All right, so our truck has a mass of three kilograms traveling at a speed of 20 meters per second traveling east, and the car has a mass of 2,000 kilograms traveling north at also 20 meters per second. All right, first question is how do we find V final and this angle theta if after the collision uh, what we have are both objects locked together, moving together as one? All right, so the key uh, concepts for this one is we have a conservation of momentum. Okay, so let's just write that down. And why do we have conservation of momentum for this collision? There is a force uh, acting on the truck. There's also a force acting on the car during the collision, but that's it, right? These are action-reaction pairs, and there's no external force acting on the system. So which means that the total momentum of the system, which is composed of the car and the truck, uh, before the collision, has to be equal to the same thing after, right? If I look at the total momentum of the system after, both those values must be the same. And again, my system here is made up of the truck and the car. So let's do that. Now, since this is a two-dimensional problem, you have to break things down into components. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the x direction separately from what I do in the y direction. All right, so in the x direction, I'm gonna write conservation of momentum. And in the y direction, I'm also going to write uh, an expression for conservation of momentum. So what do we have in the x direction? The only thing moving in the x direction before the collision is the truck. So what I do is I write the total momentum of the truck. So it's the mass of the truck multiplied by this velocity vt, which is 20. Okay. And since this is moving here to the right, I'm going to take that to be a positive value. Okay. So I simply write it like this. This must be equal to the total momentum of the system after the collision. So what do we have? We have a velocity here that's going off at an angle. I can break that velocity down into two components. This is my velocity in the x direction after, which I can write as Vf, cosine of the angle theta. And I also have a component of the velocity here that is in the vertical direction here, or in the north direction. This is what I would call Vy, and again, just using uh, some trigonometry, I can write it as Vf, the length of this one, multiplied by sine of the angle theta. All right, I'm off to a pretty good start. So let's go back to my expression now in the x direction. So what is the momentum in the x direction? Well, remember, everything here is locked together and it's moving together. So it's the total mass, so mass of the truck plus the mass of the car, and it's moving in the x direction with this velocity. So I would write this as Vf cosine of the angle theta. Here is equation one. Let's now look at the conservation of momentum in the north direction, in the vertical direction here. So what do we have? Um, well, I have a car that is moving up, and it's moving at some velocity Vc, which is 20 meters per second. The truck doesn't have any momentum in this north direction. So that's it. Before the collision, that's all I have. After the collision, I have this big chunk of stuff, which has a mass of the truck plus the car, and it has a component of velocity that is moving north, and that component is Vf sine of the angle theta. Okay, so we have two equations. Guess what? We have two unknowns. Can you guess what the unknowns are in this problem? Okay, the unknowns are Vf, what is the magnitude of this velocity, and also the angle theta.
So what you have to do now is you have to do a little bit of algebra in order to solve for these. What you can do is either isolate and substitute. Again, we know all the masses. We know this VT and VC. Those are 20 each. Uh, the easiest way for me to solve that is if I do equation 2 divided by equation 1. If I do that, look what's going to happen. Uh, the VFs are going to cancel, and I'm going to get simply one expression in terms of theta. So let's go ahead and do that. So on this, again, I'm doing equation 2 divided by equation 1. So we get MC VC divided by MTVT. Again, we'll make some simplifications in just a minute. Let me just write out the entire equations. MT plus MC, VF sine of the angle theta, divided by, again, equation 1, which is up here. All right, just write this out, VF cosine of the angle theta. All right, let's simplify some of the terms here that are the same. First of all, these m total masses are the same for both. Those can cancel out. What else? VFs are the same. And what I'm left here is a sine divided by a cosine. So this right-hand side simplifies to tangent of the angle theta. And everything here, I can substitute the values. Now, since these have the same magnitude in principle, these also cancel out, right? Because both of these guys here are going to be 20 once I substitute the values in. So you could just cancel those out for now. If the speeds were different before the collision, then I'd still have both of those terms. So we're left here with one final expression that we have tangent of the angle theta uh, right here is equal to the ratio of these masses. In this case, because those initial speeds were the same. Now we substitute the values. Mass of the car is 2,000. Mass of the truck is 3,000. Uh, cancel a bunch of those out. Cancel all the zeros. We're left with 2 over 3. So all we have to do now is take uh, inverse tan. All right, so we get that the angle theta, you do that in the calculator, uh, should get something that is like 33.7. Let's just keep three significant figures for that one. All right, so that's how you find the angle theta. Now, how do you go back and solve for, for example, the speed VF? What you can do now is use any of the equations. I can either use equation one or equation two, it doesn't matter. And you simply substitute the angle theta for 33.7. So let's just use uh, equation uh, two right here and let's isolate for VF. So my expression for VF is equal to mass of the car velocity of the car uh, divided by the total mass and multiplied by sine of the angle theta. All right, we substitute our values. Uh, mass of the car was 2,000. Uh, speed of the car, 20. And again, the total mass now is, again, 2,000 plus 3,000 because everything is moving together at, as one. And now I can't forget this important term. This is sine of the angle theta. Okay, at the end of the day, you put that in the calculator. Assuming I did everything correctly here, I think I get like 14.4 meters per second. So let's go ahead and highlight that. That is our final speed. Okay, so not too bad a problem. Let's go in the second problem now and calculate the impulse on the truck and the impulse on the car. All right, second problem, we now want to look at the impulse on the truck and the car. So let's start with uh, one object. Uh, regardless of the object, the impulse you can calculate as the force multiplied by how much time that force is acting on the object, or you can calculate it using the change of momentum of an object. So for this problem, it's probably best to use the change of momentum definition. Uh, we're going to start with the car. All right, so that means to calculate the impulse on the car, I have to look at the change of momentum on the car. So this is going to be P final of the car minus, oops, uh, minus P initial of the car. Now, keep in mind, these are two-dimensional vectors, both of these. So how do you write the final momentum of only the car? Well, you'd write it as the mass of the car times its final velocity. The final velocity is Vf minus what is the initial momentum of the car? The car is simply moving like this. So it's going to be the mass of the car multiplied by VC. And I'm going to write VC here as a vector. I have to represent it in, as a two-dimensional vector. Now let's take this equation one step further. I can factor out the mass of the car. If I do that, let's open up a square bracket. Now I'm left with the difference between both of these vectors, V final of the car. And this second term here is the initial velocity of the car. To write those as two-dimensional vectors. 
So the impulse uh, for, again, the car is equal to mass of the car. All right, how do you write V final now? Let's open that up. Let's write V final as a two-dimensional vector. Here is V final, right? It has an X component and a Y component. So I would write it as VF cosine of the angle theta, and I'd write VY as VF sine of the angle theta. Good job. Minus, what is the initial velocity of the car? Well, the initial velocity of the car is only in the y direction. It has no x direction. So I have to write zero for the x component. And the y component is simply this vc, all right, this 20 meters per second. Now, you could substitute all the numbers here, right? I know what the angle theta is. I know what vf is. I'm going to try to avoid that right now because I don't want to get any rounding error, OK? So let me make sure I don't have any rounding error. Um, so how do I take this expression a little bit further? Um, well. One thing I could do is look at these expressions here, VF and VF, uh, sine theta and cos theta. They're actually the expressions that are written right here in the conservation of momentum statement. So what I'm going to do, notice I can write VF cos theta as, if I bring this term here on the other side, let me go ahead and do that. And then at the end, I'll substitute the values of the masses. Um, all right, so let me open this up. So instead of VF cos theta, I'm going to write it as mass of the truck, V of the truck divided by the total mass of the system, mass of the truck plus mass of the car. Now this second term here, instead of VF sine theta, I'm going to write it as mass of the car, velocity, the speed of the car, divided by mass of the truck plus mass of the car. All right, so that is the first vector. The second vector, I'm not going to do anything. Now, all right, so this way I don't have any rounding error because I, you know, I truncated this to three significant figures. There may be more, and I just don't want to have any errors whatsoever because uh, I'm trying to show you something that's going to come out of this calculation. All right, now we're going to substitute our values. Uh, mass of the car, 2,000. What else? Uh, mass of the truck, 3,000. Uh, VT, uh, that's the speed of the truck. That was 20. Total mass down here is 3,000 plus 2,000. I could just write that as 5,000. All right, again, now we keep going. This is 2,000 multiplied by 20 over 5,000. OK, so that's this first vector minus 0. And what's that speed? This was uh, 20. OK, now we have to take out our red pen here and just simplify some of these expressions. So I can cancel out some zeros. Let's cancel out some zeros. One, two, three. OK, and now we're going to finish off the problem. So I'll keep the mass of the car outside of the parentheses right here. And let's simplify this. So I have 3 times uh, 20. Uh, 3 times 20 uh, gives me 60 over 5. OK, what else? Uh, the next term here is 2 times 20. That is 40 over 5. And then minus 0 and 20. OK, and our last calculation now. Uh, we take the difference now between both of those terms. So we have that the impulse on the car is equal to, uh, keep the 2,000 outside for now one last time. Here I get 60 over 5 minus 0. So that there is 12. All right, that is that x component. And here, what do you have? 40 over 5. 40 over 5 is 8. 8 minus 20 also gives me, well, that's going to be negative 12. OK. And I still have to multiply by the 2,000. right? So that's easy to do. So at the end, the total vector for the impulse on the car becomes 24,000 and minus 24,000. OK, and again, that comes in units of change of momentum, which is kilograms, meters per second. That is the impulse on the car. Now, does this make sense? This is a vector pointing in which direction? Think about it. This here, this vector here, if I was just going to plot it, it has an x component, and it has a y component, which is negative. Right? This is the direction of the impulse on the car. OK, so this is j car. All right, let's go ahead now and look at the impulse on the truck. All right, last problem now is we look at the impulse on the truck. Again, we have to look at the change of momentum, but only of the truck. Mass of the truck, V final of the truck, 
minus the initial momentum of the truck. So I just write it as uh, VT. So again, this is, I have to write everything as a two-dimensional vector. We proceed the exact same way, factor out the mass. We have this change of velocity here. So let's write down each of these as two-dimensional vectors, our final velocity and our initial velocity. We have mass of the truck, square bracket. All right, what is the V final? That's the exact same as what I had for the car, right? This is V final cos of the angle theta, V final sine of the angle theta. Minus, what is the initial velocity of the truck? It only has this east component, this x component. So I simply write this as VT and zero. It has no north component. Okay, so let's take the difference between both of those. Now again, I'm going to do the substitution where I eliminate VF cos and VF sine, where I can write it only in terms of the masses. Again, you could substitute the numbers here. I just sometimes if you only keep three significant figures, you might find that uh, the numbers might be a little bit different. And I don't want to do that right now. So I am not going to do it. So VF cos theta, again, I can write that as mass of the truck, initial speed of the truck, divided by the total mass. Okay, um, the y component, you can write it as mass of the car, speed of the car, over the total mass plus mass of the car. All right, and minus this two dimensional vector, V of the truck zero. All right, uh, now we can substitute our values because everything is known, right? There's no approximation here anymore. Uh, mass of the truck was 3000. I open up this big vector, uh, V final. So this is 3000 times 20 divided by 5000. The next one, 2,000 times 20 over 5,000. And minus that initial speed of the truck, which is 20, and it had zero component in the east direction. Again, let's factor out a whole bunch of those zero terms. Uh, there's 3,000. can simplify that. All these three can simplify with those ones. Let's take the difference now between you know, all of those terms. And keep the mass of the truck on the outside. All right, so what do you get? Three times 20 again gives me 60 over five. You can see these are some of the same numbers that we previously had. This is 40 over five. So that's that initial velocity and minus 20 and zero. Okay, so we have 3000. All right, look at this 60 over five is 12. 12 minus 20. Uh, 12 minus 20 uh, again is going to be my minus eight. Okay. Oh, that's our x component for this vector. And the last one, actually, so let me just clean this up here a little bit. Uh, this is minus 8 for the x component. And the y component now is um, 40 over 8 minus 0. Okay, 40 over 8 is 8. So you multiply through now by the mass of the truck, and look what we get. We get minus 24,000 and plus 24,000. This is, write down my final expression, the impulse on the truck is minus 24,000 and positive 24,000. Those are the two components of the vector. Again, if you were going to now consider that, compare it to the car, look what we get. Right? All of the components are the same, but it's in different directions. So let me go on the last page and just plot everything out so we can see what the vectors look like. All right, so let's kind of look at everything just as the vectors. So we have the impulse on the car, 24,000 minus 24,000. If I draw that as a vector kind of on this diagram, what would that look like? Um, so it has a positive X component and a negative Y component. So that means it would be a vector that points in this direction over here, okay? This here would be the impulse on the car. This would be the direction of the force on the car. And that makes sense, you got a car traveling this way after it's traveling that way. There has to be a force acting like this. What else? Now, uh, what is the impulse on the truck? Well, the impulse on the truck has a negative X component and a positive Y component. It's actually exactly opposite of the impulse on the car. This is a result of Newton's third law at work, right? The impulse on one object has to be minus the impulse on the other object, okay? That's 
action reaction pairs here for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction we have the truck moving eastbound after it's moving like that the only way you can deflect the truck like that is if you have a force kind of with uh, this kind of components okay it has a negative x component that slows it down a little bit and it gives it a northern component all right anyway hopefully this problem makes sense to you this is a nice problem dealing with uh, perfectly inelastic collisions in two dimensions. Thanks for watching.